All right, hello and good morning, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Paul here, hopefully you could hear me and see me and all that good stuff. I've uh, been experimenting with vertical and horizontal uh, stuff like that, so video settings and stuff like that. So hopefully everybody can see me. Uh, feel free to say hello in chat, just so I know, um, and all that good stuff. Um, I'm wearing glasses and other things, but let's get to it. Uh, just confirm that you can hear me and that'd be great. All right. Uh, let's dive into this in one second. And I'm just so glad you guys are here. Uh, my name is Paul Tranny. I'm covering sort of like next level um, 3D for designers. We're talking about some hardcore stuff because this is all about um, it's a Photoshop masterclass. So we're going to start out in Illustrator and things are going to get pretty complex pretty fast, but it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm glad you guys are here. So thank you so much for joining me um, and all that good stuff. So yeah, awesome. Audio and video, okay. Thumbs up. Let's get this party started. So I'm going to share my screen just so you know. I'm doing some crazy stuff in lots of apps, including the Substance 3D tools, just so you know, and um, let's get to the party, shall we? Awesome, Bruce. So yeah, kind of talking about some of the essentials, by the way, so I'm starting out in Illustrator, but I'm going to quickly move beyond sort of uh, the uh, sort of extruding text and stuff. Like, yeah, we'll spend two minutes doing that, but we're going to quickly dive into other things. Uh, more texturing and materials, and then moving into other 3D design apps. So we're talking the Substance apps, for instance, and uh, Cinema 4D as well. So um, yeah, so we're just kind of going beyond Illustrator because I think we've been showing this a while. Like, you guys know how this goes. If I take this text and I decide I want to like make it 3D, I can do that. First thing we need to do, and this probably takes, is the hardest part of all of this, is just opening up the 3D panels. The 3D panel is going to be enabled me to do an extrude, um, also an inflate, um, as well as sort of put it on a, uh, a flat plane for angling. Uh, which is really cool, and I'll show you kind of what that's useful for. But then I want to get into some more complex stuff. While that's doing that, I thought I'd go ahead and show this to you, because we're going to kind of get to this this level of, of, of work, just so you know. Sort of like, you know, how would we go from maybe Illustrator to something just more complex like this? And this is uh, Cinema. Well, actually, the face is Cinema 4D. The texture is in... Uh, Substance 3D Painter, and then it's brought into Stager. So that's the uh, idea. Uh, yeah, that's right, Rick H. Uh, uh, extrude is old news. Extrude is the new bevel. Um, that's how it's, yeah, extrude is like the new bevel or drop shadow. It's like, you know what? You're beveling your text, really? That's what, that's what sometimes what uh, 3D seems like to me. So... Um, uh, when you when you extrude something because you guys know how to do that stuff already all right and we are here let's get it duh, 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 duh. bam bam right boom we know how that works done and done you know which is not bad the nice thing is I could always go in and change this text right so we can say uh, over profit. We could change this text. Just change that text to planet, planet over profit. We can play with some different phrases and we can even take multiple elements. So I'm thinking about doing something like this. Boom. Because we need to start with and we're going to um, start with some text but we're going to show you how to group these together and make them consistent and all that stuff. So profound, planet over profit. Shrinking that down like so. Creating our lockup like this, grouping it together, and then extrude. You have to group things together in order to make them part of that one world, okay? Uh, notice I could also inflate this text as well. So I'll click inflate. Inflate's gonna 
inflate the text. Hopefully that makes sense. You also get a very similar look if you go into say extrude and then you start beveling it. So we'll go into bevel, twirl that down. All right, yeah, we see it. We could do the rounded bevel. That gives us a similar experience to um, the inflate, but you have you, you, you have some more control, at least control in different ways, right? So we can increase the height and then expand the width to make it even more sort of round, if you will, okay? And then we wanna drop down the depth, okay? So again, we're just kind of playing with what we could do in uh, Illustrator for 3D. All right, yes. The, frial, the trials are free. Um, usually with bevel, and maybe that's what makes inflate a little bit better if you're doing this sort of thing, is I feel like with bevel, you might get some sharper edges right here. So there is a difference between the two. Um, but you do have a lot of control when it comes to extrude. So if I increase this depth, and we can taper it down, so we can make it look like it's coming out at us like planet over profit. Put that computer to work. Oh, heck yeah, I'm gonna. This thing's gonna be uh, definitely just whizzing along, that's for sure. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be making some noise, right? So now we have it actually looking like it's shrinking into 3D space because of taper. Another way to do this is is we'll take this taper off. Computer is going to work. Wait for it. I swear I typed in 100. Wait for it. I'm trying to get this back to 100. And it's it's uh, it's on the struggle bus. The nice thing is I could jump in and even change this text. Because right now I'm thinking, I just want the word planet. So we'll just start with this word planet just to make it easier on us. Right? Boom. PC's gonna hate you. So anyways, that's what's happening. I'll try this, 100, type it in, done. Okay, so this is what I was going for. And again, I was using a lot of text, so that was slowing it down. You see how we can move this? This is not really sort of going down to a vanishing point, which is why I use taper personally. But if you go down here to perspective, you can adjust the perspective as well. So it gives you that sort of sim almost similar look, but it's gonna be different. It's actually probably better to use taper. Um, excuse me, it's better to use perspective, right? Because this is adjusting your, sort of your camera view uh, in this case, right? So that's what we're doing. This text is always changeable or editable. Let's jump in there, B-L-O-O-M, boom. Bloom. Again, just playing with this currently. Bear with me. Uh, I really wish I had some coffee. I'm all out of coffee and it's right over there. Uh, can somebody bring me some coffee, please? Right. So here this is. We got the lovely depth. Another thing you could do is, you know, again, take things to the next level because you could have, say, a classic bevel shape, which is right here. And uh, believe me, that's pretty extreme. Uh, but we could also have it repeat. So let's go in here and have this repeat a number of times. And uh, you'll notice that it starts to give it all these lovely little ridges, right? These little classic bevels, which is really going to enhance your design, in my opinion. I think it makes it look really good. Okay, so there we have that. Dropping that in, let's drop this down to 100. Let's zoom out. See where we're at, we're at with all this stuff. Let's get rid of this one. We're kind of getting someplace, right? We can take elements like, say for instance, um, let's try this one for instance. It might get a little complex, but think about using just simple 3D on 
uh, elements where you just want some shading. So for this, I just want some shading on it and I'll just add inflate. Now this is, it's still kind of complex, so be careful here, but look at how it just gives it that nice little pop, right? So it gives me that shading. I don't have to worry about adding gradients. So inflate is the new gradient, basically. So here we have Bloom, we take that, move it over, this side, double click, this is all still editable, right? Uh, and in fact, you know what, this is what I want to do. I'm going to select it and we'll use, wait for it, Puppet Warp. There we are, we'll jump in, add some puppet pins, kind of bend that like so, bending this around. And honestly, I would usually do this before um, making it 3D, just FYI. But I am showing you that you can edit it. And it's just going to give you a nice look, right? Like in the pop. See, it does. It just gives it a little pop. See that? Boom. Done. And yeah, I can clean this up some more. Let's move that over. Right? And again, we could hear our computer sort of whirring along. And we can add as many of these as we want to. But again, we're talking about taking things to the next level. Which, you know, it's like, is this at the next level yet? That's getting there. It is a version, to be honest with you. Uh, another thing, when it comes to uh, really anything you do in Illustrator, or what, any design you do, just like do it for a reason. Because I made the error of really just adding a bevel just to add a bevel. Like, why would I, What? what's my point here, right? So personally, I would probably go back in and change this to more of an inflate, just so you know. And I would just keep it simple like that. But yeah, totally up to you. Let's add some more flourishes to this. Jump in here, let's change this to curly underneath. You guys know this is my favorite font, which should be good old Blessed Script Pro, because it has all of those whoop, flourishes and uh, alternate glyphs is what it has. There we go, we have an inflate right here. Heck, let's take it down to zero, right? There it is. And now we can make that look kind of like it's coming out of that part of that letter. Yeah, notice that it's kind of it's kind of hard to work on in 3D right in here. Um, like, because I have this part that is kind of getting all wacky, this issue. How do I fix that? Well, if we go to our properties panel, we have our 3D and materials. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go to our appearance panel, which is right here. I know I'm opening up a lot, but with your appearance panel, I would turn this off. I'm showing you the properties panel because this is that effect right here. You could turn it off in the appearance panel. Just turn it off, right? Boom. Easy to work with. Now I can see those parts that are just easy to work with. Jump in, right? Fix these issues. We got issues. Just an illustrator, though. There we go. Please, can I have some coffee, guys? Please, please, please. I had some technical issues earlier. <laughs> Trying to live stream to too many platforms. But check that out. Editing that like so, coming back in, turning that on, and we're good to go. You guys get the idea. Uh, I was trying to find the glyphs, flourishes with Photoshop. Should be in Illustrator. Uh, Marsha, you're actually not wrong, by the way. It's all about the font because in Illustrator, excuse me, in Photoshop, we'll go to, you know, just open up a new file. But if you go to glyphs, there's a glyphs panel right here. So you're going to have all your glyphs for lust, L U. Well, anyways, all your glyphs are in here. Uh, Alfresco should have multiple. So yeah, you, you it's it's font based. So don't that's not a secret thing of of Illustrator. But look what's happening here. We could see that this is actually only half of the um, 
the 3D sort of um, inflate. So right over here, we'll come down, inflate both sides. Boom, there we are. Now we have that nice spherical look. Everything is looking great, right? Still doesn't quite have that perspective that I liked. Well, again, let's go back down to perspective and adjust that to make it look like it's coming out like so. So now it looks like it's coming out the front of it, something like that, and that's looking better. Oh, I'll take a Cuban coffee. I will take that Cuban coffee, please. So I'll start to do that with a couple more, but I think you guys get the idea at this point. Uh, perspective. Inflate both sides, take the depth down to zero, and maybe even rotate it a little bit more, like so. Oh, that's some, that's some extreme perspective, that's for sure. But you could say we're getting something nice. Are we having fun yet? Right, we could spend all day doing this. We could have fun with really even this flower, really any element. I'm gonna do this really fast. And then I also wanna get into sort of taking this out of Illustrator and getting into uh, Substance 3D Painter and some of the other tools, because that's where I've spent a lot of time and should be a lot of fun. Okay, so here's, again, here's our flower, inflate. Boom, there we are, we did it, we did it. I always tape the depth down and we could place that wherever we want. Cool, I think you guys get the idea. Oh, please, can we have a, please, can I make some coffee? It's right over there. Man, poor planning on my part. So, Boom, bloom. I need a kitchen raccoon, yes please. Uh, these are all actually, I just copied and pasted the same one. I would totally add more variety in here, just so you know. Um, and maybe I can, in fact, I'll go in here. I'm gonna do that for this one. I'm gonna turn off 3D and materials. It's gonna be easier to work with. Double click, we're now inside of it. You guys get the idea. But that's no way to conduct a training just to say, hey, you guys get the idea. <laughs> Don't say that. Show them. And that's what I'm doing. I'm showing you guys. Just erase that part. Done. Take it. Flip it. Reverse it. I'll have that little like offshoot right there. Kind of like that. Yeah, something. Something like that. Work it, work it, work it. Uh, flip it again. Okay, we did it. We did the thing. There we go. We're back out. Jump back in, take this bad boy, turn it on. Wait for it, wait for it. There we are. Okay, you get the idea. Done. This is just some fast 3D. So we still, we're kind of taking things to the next level. We're going to take them even further now, if you don't mind. Again, I could play with this depth all day long. Um, the, the, the one thing I'd love to see, by the way, is making these all part of the same world, right? So it, I need global lighting and global shadows and things because right now they're all, they all have individual lighting and shadows. So if I go in here to lighting, this one can be different from the others. And I really, it really comes in handy when, 
comes to the actual shadows because I want everything to cast a shadow maybe on each other, but you know, that's that's kind of a current limitation. That's okay. We'll take this, we'll, we'll throw a shadow in here like so. Uh, we'll put it behind the object and as we start to adjust the rotation of it, let's just do something like that. Increase the shadow bounds. And what else shall we do? Softness? We just want to give it a little, just a nice look. Now I'm going to select this. Um, and uh, let's get a better idea of what it's going to look like because I, I'm, I haven't rendered this out. So let's turn on ray tracing and we'll render it. And that's it for our little example of what we could do in Illustrator, right? Look at how pretty that is. That's so pretty. I'm going to do that for all of these. So pretty. They're all going to have this gorgeous pop to them. And by the way, since I'm turning this on for all this, all these, we can uh, turn on ray tracing and then remember and apply to all. So let's click render. Wait for it. Do your thing. It's getting gorgeous. It is smooth. Doesn't it look like you just like rest your head on that text? So nice, so nice. That's, that is doing its thing. And it is rendered, here we are, let's check it out. Uh, so the thing is, when once they're rendered, it, it kind of becomes an issue if you start moving things around. Uh, just keep in mind you have it rendered, and that's an issue. But there we are. Done. Gorgeous. Cool. Looks good. We've done it. Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. Maybe uh, resize this to be just that image, and it's ready you know, to post. But we've gone from this, which isn't bad, to something like that. Who's starting to read Balloon? I'm starting to read Balloon at this point. And yes, it does look like bubblegum. So, <laughs> uh, so you know, like, what's what's the point of what you're doing? Like, why, why is it this way, right? I'm trying to make something juicy and full of life like it's bursting with life right so that's kind of what this bloom is all about i don't know if i'm crazy about this flower right here to be honest with you i might sort of reconsider it just so you know um but i'm not gonna worry about that right now I'm glad you like it though doris and uh clever you made me laugh paul's eating coffee grounds out of frame <laughs> hilarious so there we have it, done. Now, let's take this to the next level, because again, we have this text. Zoop, let's move it down. We could take this text and we could export it out as an OBJ, because we've been working in 3D in Illustrator. So I could export this out uh, and bring it into other 3D programs, right? So we'll wait for this to render. If 3D has taught me anything, it means you get lots of coffee breaks because you got to wait for this stuff to render. Uh, but at this point, for this text, I can take it and decide to export it out. So let's go to Asset Export. You can do this a number of ways. Uh, in fact, I don't know what this one is. Let's just delete that. Drag this artwork into that panel. You know. And it's just this text. But we're going to do this a couple different ways. In fact, if you don't want to wait for it all the time, I didn't know this for the longest time. Switch to real-time preview. Just click on that button. Sometimes that will be turned on, and it's going to just slow down your process. So this rendering is something you do sort of at the, sort of the very last step. All right. There we are. We're back. It's kind of ugly looking. We'll drop that in there. And we'll take this and we can export this out as any one of these 3D types. 
I'm just going to do OBJ. And let's call this Bloom. There we are. Export. Desktop. Done. Cheers to that. We did it. We did it. All right, let's take a look at what's going on. Here's the OBJ. We did the thing. It's extruded. It was pretty simple. And we could bring this into other apps like Stager or Painter, things like that. So we could have a lot of fun with it. What do you guys want to do with it? Hmm? Usually we segue into Stager like here it is. I, again, I don't think that's next level. I think that's normal level. <laughs> it's not next level. Uh, but we do need the 3D model in there. And I want to play with other things because I actually want to get into some next level stuff like, you know, sort of Cinema 4D because you're going to you're going to hit uh, you're going to sort of run into limitations with Illustrator because Illustrator is not a 3D program. It's just pretending to be, you know. So how can you, um, you know, create actual 3D is kind of the next question, okay? Here's Stager real fast. Yeah, that's something I was working on. We'll turn that off. But here's Stager, and yeah, we could bring in that 3D model from my desktop. Drop it in here. Uh, Uh, let's just say import. And we could add more textures and materials and stuff like that, which we actually did not do um, in Illustrator. I didn't really talk too much about textures, but I still want to get into it. All right here this is. Boom. Boom. And bloom. There we are. Easy enough, you know, throw something on it. Yeah, we get it. I'm going to go into libraries real fast. I will throw on something. We have materials in here. Um, let me go into um, nature. And, you know, I have so many nature type things. It's a theme. I need to get in here. Thank you. And uh, let's throw something fun in there. Oh yeah, floral. Let's drop on this floral. And by the way, I'm gonna take a look at this. I'm gonna twirl this down. Look at all these different groups, like one for each uh, letter. So, but I wanna apply this to everything. So I can, oops, I just clicked. I added that to the background. Let's undo that. Take this floral heart, drag it to that folder, and it should apply it to everything. Let's make sure it's selected. Maybe that'll do the trick. All right, or maybe not. All right, so it applied it, this graphic right here. Uh, if you ever apply something, it's going to apply it. If you just drop off and drop an image on your 3D object, it's going to apply it as a graphic and really like as a decal. I want to have it cover the whole thing. So we'll do a fill. Let's fill the whole object, right? Um, I'm kind of surprised. I really wanted this to, I wanted to be able to drop this right onto the folder and have it apply to everything, but that's not working. And I don't know what to tell you, but you know what? This is not hard. And this is just one way of doing things. Our different iteration. And do you hear that? That's a little kitty cat. You hear that jingle jangle in the background? That's a little kitty cat. She never comes down here. But there that is, Bloom. We could even drop this one behind it. Oh, that's an eyesore. Ouch. Undo that. But there we are.
All right? Easy enough. We could play with those patterns all we want. Um, maybe we'll turn on ray, ray tracing. And let's actually take a look at the environment. Let's go to environment, background. Let's go to ground. Yeah, there is a ground plane. Let's make sure this is on the ground plane. So right here, move to ground. Bingo. It put it... Put it right on the ground. So we're going to start to get some shadows and things. But let's go ahead and render that out. Isn't that pretty, right? So we did it. Um, so Carol, it... It might be, so I'm kind of curious, just so you know. Uh, like, first off, we did most things in here. What did we just do? We did a simple uh, extrude. We did an inflate. I could actually do a lot of that in Stager. So if I go back to starter assets, I could take some text, drop some text in here. Let's scale it down. And get it going on. All right, so here's my text. Less script. There we are. Turn off ray tracing. So everything's going to move a little bit faster, just like we realized in Illustrator. And uh, now here's my object. So right down here. Here's a lot of these sort of bevel capabilities. There is an inflate, but like I said earlier, we could sort of round this and get a similar look. Uh, just make sh just play with the width and the spacing of it. And the depth. There we are. Go back to libraries. Let's take this, drop it right on that text. Here's where it says, hey, you know what? You want to apply some text to it. We got to go ahead and make it so it's not editable anymore, which kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, right? It's like, okay, it just, actually, let me double, let me just double check it because I've said things in the past and then they'll update, update the tool and then I'll realize, oh, you know what? Okay, let's try this. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, there we go. We have our design. We did it. Yay, congratulations. Uh, Ernesto, Ernesto, I want to get into some cool things. I'm going to show you one more thing in here because I'm, I'm just trying to show you the power of all these 3D tools. Um, but I want to get into, say, using a camera. So I'm going to add a camera. Here's my camera right here. Um, and I could play with the focal length. I actually want to tilt this. Wait for it. Let's move this forward. Okay. 
and wait for it. Let me bend it some more, and let's go to my camera again. The camera, you're going to get a focal length too, right? So we can see kind of like the zooming in, the zooming out. But I want to work on depth of field, so I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to set a focus point for right here. It's already in the center, but I just set that focal point to the center. Um, and this is where I'd put flowers in front and behind, but this is where you get that blur effect, which I absolutely love. This depth of field, it's awesome. So uh, anyways, I just think this stuff's kind of fun. You could see my blur amount's pretty intense. I would probably drag that down, cut that in half. Let's do like 5.8. Let's see what that looks like. It's going to render out. It's going to be awesome. It needs lights. So yeah, we would jump in, add more lights as well, and a number of things. But I, I have so much more to show you guys. All right. I could drop some lights in here. But yeah, I just have more to show you. It definitely needs some light work. Anyways, cool, cool. You guys get it. You're well on your way to becoming uh, 3D experts. And yes, uh, but yes, there is more. So this is coming along. It definitely needs to be brightened up. Let's do this. Uh, we could throw a sun in there. So there's environment lights, and then there's physical lights that you could just drop in. Usually that's what I would do. Maybe an area or a point light. Point lights are easy. I'll click right there. It adds this light and I can move it into position. But this is how we get those, those highlights and stuff. This is where I'd probably add a tint of uh, yellow, just kind of like a, a warm tone, just to make it feel like it's outside, maybe a cool tone on the other side. Uh, you, uh, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Cool, cool, done. Can we move on? Can we can we make something even cooler? Can we, is it possible? Heck yeah, it is. Uh, can the shapes be exported for rendering into 3D printable files? Uh, yeah, as long as it's an, ooh, look at that. An STL, sure. Let's save this, let's go into render. Uh, actually, if I, actually, let me double check on exporting. Can I, can I check on that? Because I, I really want to. Usually people render out a PSD and, uh, go with it from there. Look at that. That's looking better. Um, but let me just take a look at, say, this text. Let's go file, export, scene. Okay, so these are the file types you can export. So yeah, ultimately you need an STL. You can, you can export this out as a GTLF, bring it into C4D and export it as a uh, an STL. Actually, you know, I'm sure plenty of 3D printers actually will accept, um, you know, OBJ and all those different types, just so you know. But that's looking pretty good. We did it. We did the thing. Uh, let's take this to the next level, shall we? The next, next level, right? Because we have this text that we've created. Maybe this is a logo, right? I probably should have spent a little bit more time on it. But let's just go ahead and create outlines. Actually, let's Let's go to this one right here. Here is the text. So you could have a logo and uh, you could take anything that's created in Illustrator and bring that into other 3D programs. Like, in fact, I actually want to modify this a little bit more. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Now it kind of just looks more like a logo. So take this. We're going to do a save as Illustrator on my desktop. And this time we're going to drop it down to Illustrator 8 because we're going to bring this into C4D because I thought, okay, that would be another cool way to work with, uh, to really slow down my sh machine is what I'm thinking. We'll go back out here. We will go to Cinema 4D. It's not an Adobe product, but that's okay. Uh, you as a designer are probably using lots of things. But from here, we could take what was once created in Illustrator, drop that in to C4D, click OK, and here we have this. Let's 
connect objects and delete. That should do it. And now this is a path that we just made in Illustrator is now in Cinema 4D. It really isn't anything now, it's just this path, right? You won't see anything, but what we can do is we can extrude it. So give me a second as I jump in and figure out where extrude is, because I'm, there we go, extrude. And we'll put bloom right in, extrude, boom. Shaboom is right. Bring that down, bring it down. There we are. There's our extrude, where we can change the caps as well. Uh, let's see. Hello. Let's make the, let's like curve it. I've not played around with this that much. This is getting like super pointy. But basically I made a 3D object. There's a little bit of uh, depth to it and you get the idea, hopefully. All right, so here's the fun things you can do uh, that you can do in like Cinema 4D because you could have an element and I really wish I had one. Uh, let's just take, let's just do this. Oh, so much, so many windows I need to open and all this stuff. Wait for it. Uh, clover flower? Sure. Let's drop in a little clover flower. Where are you, little buddy? Are you clear over there? Get over here. And you are getting bonus material today. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. Let's go zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero. There we are. Okay. Now. Uh, I do not know the shortcut key for fitting into the viewable window. Frame selected items. There we are. Okay, here we have this. Done. Hold on. This will make sense in a second. But what I want to do is I want to put this flower all over this, just like I was doing back in Illustrator. Right? I was trying to put these flowers over everything over the text, which is very nice and clean, but could we do that in, uh, you know, something like a 3D program like Cinema 4D? And the answer is better be yes, because I'm doing this demo. Um, let's jump in. First off, we could, we could try to manually position everything, which is just gonna take forever. But what I really wanna do is just cover the whole thing with this clover. So we need to jump in and use a, wait for it, a cloner. So here's our cloner. We'll put the clover flower inside of that cloner. And the cloner is currently set to grid. So if I zoom out, we might not, we might see um, a lot of uh, the flowers. But nonetheless, I want this to, to put these clovers over an object all over that object, which happens to be this extrude element. So let's see if I could take that. It's just called extrude, why not? But let's take that word extrude and drop it in there. And now we have that set up. So let's zoom in on it. And let's increase the cloner count. And now we have a bunch of those lovely clovers spread throughout that whole object. Oh yeah, better be, you know what? I've never used Blender by the way, Tanya, but I'm all about this. So what I usually use guys, just so you know, is I use something called, um, and let me hide this. 
I use uh, an extension called Forester. So Forester will uh, will give you a ton of stuff. So it actually gives me this like multiflora. Let's shrink this down like this grass. And in fact, I don't want grass. I want my own little flowers. Here's some some asters or something, right? So let's see what that looks like. Shrink it down some more because that type is so small. We can take that and yeah, we can have a uh, forester add a multi-cloner to it. Put that inside. Multi-cloner, same process, distribute along, extrude. Turn that off. Scale it down for sure. And look at that. Look at how lovely that is. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Sweet. Ah, oh, man, I bit off more than I can chew. Jeez. Next level 3D for designers. I need to continue this later on. But you could see this sort of this new concept for graphic designers when you're, say, dealing with type or whatever going from Illustrator into Stager and then into Cinema 4D. From there, render it. You have a lot of those same render settings, all this cool stuff. I can decide to maybe even put, let's see if I could put this petal texture on Extrude. Ooh, hello. Maybe not. Maybe don't do that. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, and this is like only the start of it. In fact, let me open up a, a final file really fast for that. And I didn't even get into my that face that I wanted to work on in Painter. I think I'm just going to have a part two next week where I continue this. And that's where I'm going to sort of show how to make something like this. And this is going to be more along the lines of using Painter, creating textures, uh, and applying them to things. Uh, if you guys are interested, so let me know. I think it's super fun. Fun. Uh, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this C4D file just to kind of step forward a little bit. To see where things have ended up. And then we have this craziness. That's crazy. But like look at all these flowers and lights and all this fun stuff. What happens? Well, we'll just turn around and like render it. Something like that. Here's just different versions. I really like this one. This one turned out pretty well. So that's kind of the direction we're headed. The flowers are a little weird. Here's another one with showing like some depth too, which might work. So. Lots of ideas, lots of things you can do. And this is what we want to be able to do as designers. Like we did this pretty easily in, in Illustrator. Let me move this over. We did this text really fast in Illustrator. And uh, if you give me one second, I'm just going to go back in here and turn on the rendering. But, you know, sort of taking things Again, to that next level to overuse a statement and uh, show you what we could do. Wait for it, which is why you always have time for coffee when you're doing 3D, because you're always waiting for something to render, especially if you're just working on a, uh, an old MacBook Pro like I am. I'm not using any fancy equipment at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is gorgeous, right? So 3D, this is a good case in point to say, you know, 3D doesn't make things better. It can, but to a large degree, per, I mean, you tell me which one you like. We have this one and then we have this one. And then, uh, and then I'll judge you for, for your opinion. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, let me know which one you like. We have the left side, the right side. I'll leave you guys with that. Um,
I, I really like, I mean, I guess they're, they, they, they both need some more work. My, my laptop's like, a, it's like a, let's see, let's actually see how old my laptop is. 2019. So yeah, it's four years old. So anyways, just kind of curious. I'll work on this some more. Tune in next week is going to be part two of this, where we really get into some crazy stuff, making things again like like this. It's like, okay, what if we made textures and things? This I already have in um, Painter right here. In fact, let's turn it on. Preview of next week. Right. Sweet. You guys have a great day. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I'm going to turn it over uh, to T. White is going into Photoshop because the nice thing about a lot of this stuff, especially once I'm done in, say, you know, C4D is I bring this into Photoshop to really do the, the heavy lifting when it comes to design. Everything ends up in Photoshop. This is why I'm glad Terry's covering that next um, and, uh, yeah, tune in next week as we get into some crazy stuff. And, uh, thank you so much for, um, so it's going to be the n next week is the next, next level, by the way. But thanks for hanging out, everybody. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, stay tuned. Um, tried to go live on other platforms, but it did not work out. You guys have a good one. And, uh, leaving you guys in the capable, capable hands of, of Terry White. All right. We'll see you guys.